So, based on the fact that you've clicked on this video, or got sent this video, you probably know of furries existing, but you don't know anything about the furry fandom apart from maybe a few rumours or stereotypes. That, or you just like watching my silly videos. Either one. Just to clarify, the furry fandom is a community who are interested in anthropomorphic creatures, and the term anthropomorphic creatures cover any creature which have human-like characteristics, no matter what that may be. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the essential knowledge of the furry fandom so that you can know the basics if people want to talk to you about it. To the average person, it looks like fursuits are a large part of the furry fandom. What you may not know is that only about 15% of furries actually own them due to the high costs of these one-of-a-kind pieces of wearable art, as they usually cost between 2000 and 7000 US dollars for a full suit, depending on which fursuit maker is commissioned. As you can see in this time-lapse of a fursuit maker creating a fursuit head, it takes an extremely long amount of time to buy all of the resources and equipment to make a fursuit, plan making the fursuit, and then make the fursuit with all of its fine details exactly as it was envisioned. I'm sure you agree that due to this attention to detail in every fursuit by almost every fursuit maker, and how much effort it takes to make an original character come to life in the real world through the use of a fursuit, that the cost is fully justified. Now, you may be wondering what a fursona is. The word fursona is a play on words between furry and persona, and is essentially an anthropomorphic original character created by a person in the furry fandom that usually reflects their personality and interests, or, in some cases, is simply like any other character and has no relation to the person's personality or interests. Of course, fursonas are not limited on what species they could be, as long as it is an anthropomorphic original character of some sort and owned by a member of the furry fandom, it will always fall under that definition, unless stated otherwise by the person who created it. The primary intention of fursonas have always been to have a representation of the owner of the fursona online and within the fandom through an anthropomorphic character, usually to interact with people in the furry fandom. However, this isn't always the case, as I have stated previously. Moving on to furry conventions. This is where most people who have a fursuit tend to show it off, and almost all of these videos online originate of fursuiters goofing around or participating in events held at whichever convention they are attending. However, these conventions aren't just about showing off fursuits, there are many activities that people attending furry conventions can take part in, such as visiting the dealer's den of conventions where some talented artists and fursuit makers hang out and allow people to buy merchandise, attending panels, or watching or even participating in dances, and so much more. Overall, conventions and meetups are essential for the fandom, as they provide a space for people with the same interests to meet in person and socialise, so that they can make friends with similar interests in person, far easier than by most other means. If it wasn't obvious, the furry fandom as a whole has a very large interest in art. There are lots of artists in the furry fandom, some more popular than others, who draw incredible things, post them, and sometimes even offer their services to draw people's characters however they would like. It goes without saying that since all of the artists in the furry fandom aren't part of some hive mind, that naturally they all have different styles and types of art that they draw, making all of the art quite diverse and subjectively quite fun to look through or commission something in a specific style. However, the art in the fandom isn't limited to just digital products. Of course there are fursuits. However, there are so many other pieces created using traditional media, such as badges, pins, and so on. Unfortunately, there has been a lot of misconceptions spread by major media companies throughout the years, and although this is beginning to improve, many people still perceive the furry fandom as only people who dress up in silly costumes, or a large group of people who only participate in NSFW activities. Believe it or not, being a furry isn't only about dressing up in a silly costume, viewing, or participating in NSFW activities. Fursuiters are actually quite a small minority of the fandom, and the people who only use popular sites of the fandom to view or participate in NSFW activities are an even smaller minority. However, we have 
have to remember that the fandom is a community full of mostly adults, so a group of them, just like in any community, are inevitably going to be interested in such activities behind closed doors. Luckily, starting primarily in 2020, the public's perception of the fandom has got a lot better over the years, which has also led to an increase in members and, subsequently, the diversity of members in the furry fandom in terms of background and group association drastically increasing. At the end of the day, this video only goes over the basics of the furry fandom, from fursuits to fursonas, conventions, art, and the challenges of how media has portrayed the fandom over the years, there is far more to explore and understand than I can fit in this video. If you're interested in finding out more, maybe try joining some online communities such as Discord servers to ask furries some questions directly, or attend a convention to experience it all firsthand. But apart from that, I hope you all have a fantastic day.